Welcome back to Digits here at WSJ Live. I'm Simon Constable. Substitute NFL referees cause a storm on Twitter due to some calls they made last night. To tell us what happened, we've got Kevin Clark of the Wall Street Journal Sports Desk. A storm maybe understates it, doesn't it? Um, what, what was the decision? Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Basically, at the end of the game, uh, Russell Wilson, the Seahawks quarterback, uh, threw the ball up. There was a there was a, a pushing and shoving thing going on in the end zone. MD Jennings, the Packers defense. in football, pushing and shoving, shocking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and a pretty typical stuff. Uh, two players, MD Jennings from the Packers. We're and looking the, at pitches from that right, right now. And the Seattle Seahawks, Golden Tate, came down with the ball at the same time. It was very clear that the Packers player came down with it. It should have been an interception to end the game. Instead, the replacement officials, after much discussion, after much replay, said that Seattle won the game with the catch. And now. Things all hell is broken loose, basically. Yeah, and some some of the uh, the NFL players themselves tweeting, notably right. Green Bay's T.J. Lang, right. which uh, he, and he made some he made some tweets um, with some words we cannot say on the news hub right. or, or on digits um, at all. And there it is. That that's one of his tweets, and we have blurred out a word there which I'm not going to sure. repeat. Um, em embarrassing. Thanks, NFL. And he said another one, um, w which was was interesting too. And he, he uses uh, another word too, and says. Uh, Basically, he, he's, he's expecting a fine. There it is. Find me and use the money to pay regular referees. <laughs> right. And again, a, a word, a word, um, a word is um, is blurred out there. Right. Um, so he could be fined a lot of money for this. Yeah, he could be a, fined a lot of money. You know, basically the the scale goes: you get fifty thousand for the biggest, most illegal hit, and you get five thousand for wearing the wrong type of socks or the wrong type of shoes. So this will be in the middle, probably twenty five thousand, thirty thousand. You know, there was a great line on Twitter from again. And, and it doesn't it doesn't matter that. It was on Twitter, not on the field. I mean, you could. This no, is like swear. It's like is swearing at the ref, right? Twitter is considered part of you know media availability. I think. Oh, right, okay. You know, there was a funny line from a guy in the Buffalo Bills this morning who tweeted, "You know, so much to say, but so little room in the wallet." Uh, you know, he knows that the Twitter is considered a public place, and if you say stuff like that, you're going to get fined. And so, I, I would expect probably twenty five thousand, uh, twenty five thousand, thirty thousand, something like that, like the way uh, coaches got for berating the refs last week in on the field. Right. Well, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. I mean, it, 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 the, the five thousand for the socks seems right. a little. And there's T.J. Lang's Twitter page. We can't sure. scroll down because he used some uh, naughty words sure. that we're not going to let anyone see, just in case they don't know what those are. We don't want to <laughs> educate people in in that line of thing. So th this wasn't just him. It was a lot of people. I was coming to, uh, to work this morning, re reading the Twitter feed, and, and one of my colleagues re replied, referred to the referees as scabs. Yeah, and that's happening a lot. I mean, you that know, seems harsh, There right? was a tweet this morning that Scott Walker is now siding with the referees, the referees union, which is, I mean, the Wisconsin governor who's, who's you know, kind of famous for, for not welcoming unions, he's he's supporting the referees union now. So it's kind of creating a strange atmosphere. Uh, and, and everybody who is basically getting behind the fact that these referees, the real referees, need to come back to the game. And um, we're, we're seeing there on the screen up to 80,000 tweets, um, I mean, retweeted, sorry, the, the T.J. Lang's tweets, 80,000 times retweeted. I mean, that that's a lot of people really jumping on this. People um, very, very unhappy. Were you unhappy about this? Presumably you were watching the game. Yeah, I was watching the game. Was I unhappy? I, I mean, I sort of saw this coming. There was a doomsday scenario that was almost inevitable because, you know, these things almost kept happening or it was very close here in this city or in this game, and you knew this was going to happen eventually. It was almost entertaining to me just because, I mean, it was just the perfect scenario to just expose, uh, you know, incompetent group of I officials. I mean, how, how hard is it to, to, to referee? I mean, I've, I mean other, I've not played football, but I've played soccer, well, and, and the re referees are usually pretty good whether they are your high school teachers or whether they are n international it referees. It just moves so much faster. You know, the difference between this and the one-week lockout with the officials in 2001 mm. is that in the 2001 they allowed college officials from Division One to come up mm. and kind of moonlight. Now you have to, you can't do that. So you're taking from Division three or high school or whatever it is, and you're bringing them into the NFL, and it's moving so fast, and and they're they're so overwhelmed they can't possibly keep up. Because if you could keep up, you would be in Division one or the NFL. And so you can't keep up. You can't see that sort of really fast game and figure out what's going on. You can't keep control of the game when you're overwhelmed like that. You know, if one guy's pushing so this guy, it gets. Is this really a tricky. black eye for the NFL? Then it would it would seem that I mean the the fans can't can't like this because presumably they want to see a good game. With appropriate calls, I don't want to say good call, but appropriate calls. You know, when it's allowed, when it's not allowed, etc. Et yeah, cetera. I mean, it's really interesting because everyone's getting a, a fair share of of bad calls their way, 
And so it's not like one team's getting an advantage. But yeah. I think that people just sort of have a bad taste in their mouths because mm. the Packers fans right now, they think they won the game last night and they should have they should have won the game. And so, you know, do Packers fans like the NFL less than they used to? That's you know, that's the, we'll find out NF, next week. The NFL supports the decision. We got it because it's story here. It supports the decision not to right. overturn the Seahawks touchdown, which is interesting too, right? Yeah, I mean I don't I didn't expect them to come out with a statement and say that they were wrong. But you know, it, basically they, they came out and said that the, the call on the field and the, uh, the procedure was followed correctly, and there's nothing they can do. The decision is final. Okay, the decision is final. There we have it. Thank you very much, um, Kevin Clark. You can read uh, more on that on WSJ.com.